Anthony Bear returned to this channel during last week's full week of videos, where he tried to simulate the temperature on Earth with a heat lamp and a globe in a garage. You would think that he couldn't get much more wrong. Well, if you did think that, you'd be wrong. Because today, Anthony Bear uses a famous experiment in completely the wrong way. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. What a year it's been on this channel. To hit half a million subscribers was obviously a high point, but it's been a great year all the same. So what better way to end this year than with my favourite flat earther, Anthony Bear. We join him as he begins to discuss his next experiment. Okay, so we decided to do our own Eratosthenes experiment by uh, triangulating the sun in uh, two different locations. Okay, let's see what we came up with. So we made our own right angle triangles so we can measure the uh, shadow to come up with the angle to the sun. We did one in Florida and we did one in Michigan, uh, 1150 miles apart. Pretty easy with the cell phone. Uh, we both took our measurements at the exact same time, 1227, uh, February 13th. Okay, straight away we've got a slight issue. Eratosthenes conducted his experiment on the summer solstice, and his first location, Syene, is almost bang on the Tropic of Cancer, meaning there was absolutely no shadow in that well on the summer solstice. Now, Florida is a bit too far north, and February is pretty far away from the summer solstice. So here's Michigan up here, and Florida right here. If we wait till noon, the sun is going to basically be in line with, with both of the two positions. Well, they are around four and a half degrees apart. But to be fair, Syene and Alexandria are around three degrees apart. So we're going to end up with something like this. So here's Michigan, and then we should be able to calculate our distance to the sun, right? On a flat earth and on a curved earth. Sorry, what? The distance to the sun? That is not what Eratosthenes was doing. Eratosthenes was measuring the circumference of the Earth. Okay, so here it is on CAD. We're going to do it on a flat Earth first. And uh, the top orange line is from Michigan to the sun, which is 3,154 miles. And uh, that's on a 34 degree angle. And then the second line, orange line, is from Florida to the sun, which is uh, 2,291 miles. And that's on a 50 degree angle. And uh, from the sun to the ground, is 1,760 miles. And then uh, from Michigan to the sun on the ground is uh, 2,617 miles. But this is no way to figure out the distance to the sun. And that is because the sun's light comes in at pretty much parallel. And we know this, it's quite easy to see. Yes, you flat earthers bang on about crepuscular rays, obviously, but look what happens when you see these rays from above. They are parallel. That angle is caused by the curve of Earth's surface, not by the direction of the sun's rays. Okay, here's our flat Earth map, and uh, this is the path of the sun in the summertime, right here. The, this is the summer solstice. This is the equinox right here, and then this is the winter solstice, where the sun takes a long path around. Now, I lined up the sun from the south, because we did it at like 1227. So the, the sun will be roughly in the south right here. And right here, this is the uh, shortest day of the year, if you're in another hemisphere, right here, December 20th. We're gonna come up, we're gonna come up uh, to January, be about here, and February be about there. Dear, oh dear, this is one of the worst experiments I've ever seen. Again, this is ridiculous, and I'll tell you why. There has never been a full explanation as to how the sun moves between tropics on the flat earth model. No reason as to what powers it or the forces involved. It is just a guess and then they assume that that guess is correct. So the sun should be pretty close right there. Okay, now here's the bottom of Michigan. It's a few degrees down from the latitude line. So we're gonna measure down, we're gonna go, every, every latitude line is 15 degrees. So we're gonna come down to here, this will be 15. And then we're going to come down to here. This would be 30, 30 right here. 
come down to here and be like 45 and a couple more degrees 47 we'll say roughly is where the sun is on this map so let's take a look first off every degree on this map is 59 miles so 47 degrees times 59 miles is 2773. No one is disputing the triangle in which you drew, Anthony. The one you drew off the back of taking an angle reading of the sun's rays based on Earth's curvature, not by the sun's distance. Which is uh, pretty close to our uh, triangulation. So it's pretty amazing. I can't believe it came out that accurate. Okay, here's the globe model. We set the diameter at 79.17, same as the globe's supposed to be. Then we left the flat earth model right on top because the, the line from Michigan is the same. That doesn't change. And then the yellow line down here is the, the measurement of the uh, Florida line. Now, according to our calculations, the sun is only 8,000 miles away. Using our numbers, the earth would have to be much bigger in order for the sun to be millions of miles away. Okay. Okay, so your triangle, which doesn't mean anything, has calculated something which doesn't mean anything. Colour me surprised. But let's think about this logically. Which one of these two scenarios is more likely? A 6,000 degree sun, 93 million miles away, or a sun which you don't know the temperature of that is around 3,000 miles away, that you have no working theory for, which magically moves between the two tropics under a mysterious force that you can't explain. Apparently, Eratosthenes did a much better job than we did without a cell phone or a computer. Now, I'm not making any claims here. Uh, I would like to turn this into a workshop. Well, I'll call this part one. And uh, maybe some other people can help me triangulate the sun in different areas. And then we can come up with some, uh, some calculations, some coordinates, and apply them to a flat earth to see what we come up with. I don't think anybody's really done that. Now, I'm only off 100 miles. In, uh, in Michigan, I forgot the 600 foot of elevation. So I moved it up and I picked up another 60 miles. And uh, now I'm only off 100 miles. So, I mean, <laughs> pretty close. It'd be interesting to see with some other numbers what we come up with. What do you think makes more sense? That this sun is 3,000 miles away or 93 million miles away? Uh, I'm going to go with 3,000. That you have no working theory for which magically moves between the two tropics under a mysterious force that you can't explain. Sure, sure. Okay, which model do you think makes more sense? Oh, not this again. Here's Michigan and the... In the winter time, the, uh, the Earth is tilted back at 23.4 degrees. Now, here's this angle. Now, the, the sun is actually, there's the angle right there. The sun is actually 3 million miles closer. Okay, versus the winter time, which is the axis going the other way. And here's the angle of the sun. Supposedly, this sun angle. Now this now the sun is actually further away three million miles, so this angle difference is going to make uh, the difference between summer and winter. Yeah, that does make sense, as I've explained before. The same amount of solar radiation spread over a larger surface area equals cooler, as compared to this model. Okay, let's let's look at this model. Here we are in Michigan, right here, and here's the sun. So. The sun is out here in the winter time, and in the, in the summertime it moves a couple thousand miles closer, and I guess it would make it hotter in the summertime. Which one do you think makes more sense? Not yours. Here's a final example as to why. How in the hell does the sun throw its light around a corner in the southern hemisphere summer? These are the parts of the globe illuminated during the summer on a flat earth map, yet that magic sun of yours is able to cast its light in special shapes. Dear oh dear, what a mess. Well, I think we should leave Anthony for today and we'll come back and look at his part two next week, shall we? But for now, we're all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. Thanks so much for watching. It truly is appreciated as always. If you enjoyed it today, please do consider subscribing to the channel and of course, hit that thumbs up button too. I've been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a cracking weekend and a wonderful New Year's Eve. And I will see you all in 2024. 
on a tinfoil Tuesday, and we're going back to the mud floods. See you then.